So GNOME 49 should be KDE 6.5 and KDE 6.5 GNOME 49. I know it sounds like the most beautiful title of all time and also the most abstruse, but bear with me because there's a method to this apparent madness. And believe me, I've thought about this quite a bit before putting together this reflection that might seem strange, but which I think touches the heart of the problem with modern Linux desktops. The new GNOME 49 release may please you more or less, but it simply boils down to one word, refinement. And when I say refinement, I mean exactly that. These are small modifications and coherent improvements to the GNOME vision that seem almost imperceptible and for which it would perhaps even be pointless to make a dedicated review or video. We're talking about a new accessibility menu added directly to the login screen, a lock screen that now shows media controls when you're playing music or video, a smarter placement of the Do Not Disturb toggle in the Quick Settings menu, and the arrival of new default apps like Showtime for video playback and Papers for document viewing. Tiny steps, yes, but all in the same direction. This is what we might call progressive development, labor limae as the Romans would say, consistency, incremental refinement, a philosophy where each release doesn't revolutionize anything but carefully improves what is already there. And I have to admit it works, because GNOME today is arguably the most coherent and polished desktop in the Linux world. But here comes the paradox. Every time I see a new GNOME release, I inevitably think of a new KDE release. And the irony is that these two desktops are living through a historical moment where they should, in some ways, swap strategies. Instead, they appear more entrenched than ever in their respective philosophies. Because GNOME, through its continuous refinements, keeps delivering the same minimalist, integrated, and predictable experience. Don't get me wrong, I'm not criticizing the quality. GNOME is elegant, efficient, user-friendly, but it's also safe. When you open GNOME software, you can already guess which three apps will be featured. When you open settings, you know there will be a small, curated set of toggles, and nothing more. Everything feels precise and consistent, but also frozen in time. Some boldness wouldn't hurt. Why not embrace what the majority of users already install? Dash to dock, arc menu, user themes, these are practically ubiquitous. Yet every update risks breaking them because of extension API changes. Integrating a customizable dock, an optional traditional menu, or a lightweight theming tool would enrich GNOME without destroying its coherence. Meanwhile, KDE has taken the opposite path. Continuous experimentation, redesigns, new widgets, and shifting defaults. Plasma 6 introduced a modernized Breeze theme, Wayland support improvements, and a big cleanup of system settings categories. Plasma 6.1 refined window rules and animations, while 6.2 brought tweaks to the system tray and alignment of widgets. Even minor releases often reorganize preference panels or redesign small tools like Discover. It's exciting, but also disorienting. At times, it feels like every release is both a stable product and a beta for the next experiment. And that's the heart of the problem. KDE today offers an extraordinary amount of power and flexibility open system settings, and a whole universe of customization opens before you. Want to tweak window animations? Dozens of options. Want to customize themes? Endless choices. Want to manage virtual desktops? Practically anything is possible. This richness is a strength, but it also creates fatigue. Just when you master a workflow, a new update moves settings around, changes defaults, or alters visual effects. For longtime users, it's exhilarating and exhausting at the same time. In contrast, GNOME has reached a sort of zen maturity. Its applications are all consistent and visually unified thanks to Libadweta. Integration with online accounts works seamlessly. Window management is smooth and intuitive. But the moment you want to adjust something beyond the defaults, say moving the dock to the bottom, you're forced to rely on extensions. And with every major update, there's a real chance those extensions stop working. This rigidity limits an otherwise excellent experience. The truth is that both desktops have what the other lacks. GNOME embodies discipline, coherence, design consistency, the courage to say no to clutter. KDE embodies openness, experimentation, power user features, and adaptability. But instead of learning from one another, they march on as if on parallel tracks, never intersecting. Imagine a GNOME that allows itself small liberties, a few extra settings for the dock, a traditional menu option, 
accent color choices integrated by default, not turning into KDE, but enriching its experience without betraying its philosophy. Imagine a KDE that pauses for a cycle to consolidate what it already has. Plasma today already includes almost everything a desktop user could ask for. If development focused on bug fixes, performance improvements, and refining the defaults, KDE could become unbeatable. Of course, to be fair, it's not entirely black and white. GNOME has taken bold steps too, moving to Wayland as the default session, integrating libadweta to unify the look and feel of applications, improving accessibility and HDR support. And KDE has also shown signs of discipline. The Breeze theme has become more consistent, Discover has been cleaned up, and settings have been reorganized to reduce confusion. Both projects are more complex and nuanced than the stereotypes suggest. Still, the dominant tendencies remain clear. GNOME polishes endlessly. KDE experiments endlessly. One perfects the same recipe again and again. The other invents new ones without ever letting them mature. And the result is that both remain just a step away from absolute greatness. That's why I argue they should borrow from each other. Not switch identities completely, but cross-pollinate. GNOME could benefit from KDE's willingness to integrate features users clearly want. KDE could benefit from GNOME's discipline to say enough and refine. If each embraced just a little of the other's philosophy, the Linux desktop could evolve into something truly extraordinary. Will this happen? That's the question I ask myself every time I see a new release from both camps. And every time, I hope this is the moment one of them makes that leap. Maybe it won't. Maybe the eternal dance between refinement and experimentation is what keeps both alive and interesting. Maybe if they swapped roles too much, they'd lose the very identity that makes them unique. Or maybe not. Maybe what we need is exactly that, a gnome with a touch more courage and a KDE with a touch more discipline. Only time will tell if this paradox will ever be resolved or if we'll continue forever with two brilliant desktops that could be perfect if only they learned from each other.